Well, uh, one of the policies that we have here on Tuesday Night Live is to bring new talent to you. I'd like to introduce a, a woman who is very well known on the Melbourne and Sydney club scene. She's not been on television before. This is her first big gig. She's a personal friend of mine. Would you make her very welcome, Miss Rachel Berger. Thank you very much, Wendy. Actually, I think Sharon's Nana made this dress, actually. It's my Jewish Rococo look, especially for this evening. But I have been actually uh, thinking a lot about the image of women lately because it's very difficult. There are so many options for us to have. And I thought one way of finding out what the image was for women in 1989, because as you can see, I'm an expert, I thought I would go and have a look at a few store windows and particularly at store dummies. So the first store I went to was George's. Now the dummies in George's are fantastic. They're really tall. They're really thin. Their hair is all gel back. And they look like somebody farted in their face. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to Portman's. Now, the dummies in Portman's are a little bit dumpier. Their hair's not quite right. They have blemishes. I had to go to Fossey's to feel really good about myself. <laughs> and if you open up any magazine these days, they tell you exactly what we're supposed to look like. This summer, we want you to look tall, long-legged and vigorous. I don't want to look like a great Dane, thanks. <laughs> and there's so many diets in there. The walk off, the work off, the weight off, piss off. <laughs> Not interested. Since about 1962, women aren't allowed to have a skerrick of fat anymore. The only body we're allowed to have is the one that's left when all the fat is gone. In fact, we don't even have bodies. We have problem areas. <laughs> Saggy thighs and baggy bottoms and orange peel arms. What's the matter? Are we taking up too much space? <laughs> Compared to a Barbie doll? <laughs> and have you noticed how many products there are these days too for losing weight? Like you can buy this fibre tablet and what you do is you take one, you swallow it with water and they expand to five times their size. What happens is one tit blows off. <laughs> <laughs> then a leg. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you lose weight. <laughs> And you, could, you can now have this thing called youth treatment. And I thought youth treatment would be like, you know, they'd lock me in a room with four young men for a week. <laughs> I'd lose weight. <laughs> but that's not what happens. What happens is you have to go to Switzerland and they transfuse your blood with that of a prepubescent sheep. <laughs> and you come back to Melbourne and you feel okay, but all of a sudden you're lusting after legs of lamb in butcher shop windows. <laughs> New Zealanders are following you down the street. <laughs> and nowhere is the image of women more distorted than in advertising. I mean, I'm sure most of you here have seen that uh, community service ad for girls who drink. You know the one I'm talking about. All these bogans standing around saying, oh, no, no, I, I, I wouldn't go out with a girl who gets drunk, no. <laughs> I went out with a girl and she got drunk and she vomited in my helmet. <laughs> Nah, you, you wouldn't get serious with a girl who gets drunk, nah. Go out and root them every Saturday night, but you wouldn't get serious about it. <laughs> and the irony is that you don't actually see very many women in beer ads. You know, except I think Jan Stevenson, the golfer who wears her skirts up to here somewhere. And I thought they could have women in beer ads, like they, in the, you know, the Vic Bitter ad. They could have Susan Rossiter Peacock Sangster Renouf. You can get it leaving Andrew. <laughs> you can get it leaving Robert. You can get it leaving Frank. And if you're wondering about the house, as a matter of fact, I've got it now. <laughs> oh, you're wicked, aren't you? And this, this image thing is also very relevant to men as well. For instance, Bob Hawke wears those double-breasted grey flannel suits because he figures they're saying, trust me, I'm solid. <laughs> but how can you trust a man that has eyebrows that look like in the springtime they're going to burst open and butterflies are going to fly out? <laughs> <laughs> and what about, and the men will know this, what about the Sheridan Sheets poster? You know, that tall, well, I don't know if he's tall, but you know, that man, you know, between the sheets. And I think the tag is hot nights, cool sheets. I think it would be appropriate to have hot night sweaty balls, really. <laughs> and I, I don't know about the women here tonight, but I have never woken up next to anybody like that. 
I wake up next to someone, you know, their hair is glued to one side of their head. <laughs> they have saliva dribbling down one side of their mouth. <laughs> Muesli is in their eyes. And that's usually when they decide that they're going to whisper in your ear with that morning breath before they brush their teeth. You go, no, I'll get the coffee. It's okay, just stay in bed. Because <laughs> so somewhere, sometime, guys read in the handbook that they have to blow in a girl's ear. Oh. <laughs> they don't do it gently. They do it like they've got to get all the candles out at once. <laughs> And then they start with the licking like they're having a double head and organ vase. <laughs> For the next three days, you walk around with a bucket over your head like one of those dogs that have had an ear operation. <laughs> I look at that poster and I ponder. And I've decided that in 1989, the only people that wake up next to guys like that are other guys. <laughs> Thank you.